Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to give my prediction for UFC 297's main event, Sarn Strickland vs. Drakus Duplessis. And why I believe Sarn Strickland is not only going to beat Drakus Duplessis, I believe it's going to be a fairly dominant unanimous decision or a finish in the 4th or 5th. Why do I believe this? Why am I going against MMA Guru and Lucas Tracy, who seem to both believe that Drickus Duplessis is actually going to be getting a finish on Sean Strickland this weekend, and some of them are actually saying it's going to be the cardio of Drickus here. Now, I disagree with that quite a bit, actually, but... In this video, I'm going to go through some of the most recent fights of both Sarn Strickland and Drickus Duplessis, showing some highlights, showing some not-so-highlights, and overall just going to prove to you why I believe Sarn Strickland is going to beat Drickus Duplessis this weekend. I have chapters in the description. Just go through the video if you want to see what you want to see. I have links to every video that I'm going to be showing here. Everything I'm showing is for commentary purposes, and let's get started. First fight that we're going to be looking at is going to be Jack Hermanson versus Sean Strickland. I have notes right here for all the notable moments. Now, the reason that for the Jack Hermanson fight specifically why I chose this fight is purely because the biggest question for the Drickus Duplessis versus Sean Strickland matchup is, is Drickus's wrestling going to be good enough to get Sean Strickland to the ground? Because I'm going to spoil it for you right now. If Drickus cannot get Son Strickland to the ground, he is not outstriking him, and Strickland will dog walk him to a fairly dominant and easy decision. And I'm going to show you some of the highlights and not so highlights of the takedown defense of Son Strickland at middleweight. And my first timestamp is going to be 4 minutes 16. I'm going to go right before that at 4.11. So, all you need to know the one thing I. Well, there are actually quite a few things. Part of those few things that I'm going to come at Strickland for is his posture, dude. Every time he goes for a jab here, I feel like going for a single leg, or in this case, Jack Hermanson is going to be going for this double leg because of the posture of Son Strickland here. It is open. It is. Like, this is not this is not an advisable posture if you're doing MMA. It's just not. Like, you... If you do not have good takedown defense, you are going to be taken down relatively at will by anybody who has wrestling slightly above average. But let's look at the takedown defense of Son Strickland with this posture. Strickland poking at him with a jab. Jack Hermanson gets wise to this, goes for the jab again. Now, the first thing that Son Strickland is doing is he's waving his hand down to get his arm in position to get what we're going to see over-unders. Jack Hermanson goes in for a double leg, controls the lead leg. Son Strickland has an overhook and an underhook. This is a great start, and this is something that Strickland is very good at. I will, I'm, now understand, this is not any crazy stuff. This is fairly basic takedown defense, but that's how I would describe Strickland's style, really. Like, I'm a Strickland fan. It's basic takedown defense that he does to a very good degree. And his striking, the best part about his striking is his defensive striking. It really is. Does not get hit nearly as much as he is hitting people, but it's really one, two, and a teep kick. And his takedown defense really is establish over unders and disconnect and control the wrist. And we're going to see this. Gets over unders. Now, Jack Hermanson actually does a good job here, and this is probably his most successful he is during the entire fight. So, see this. Jack Hermanson has one arm on the leg. Son Strickland, although he has a solid underhook, his overhook just isn't that good. You should really be controlling this elbow to control the elevation of this elbow. Because what I'm going to do, if I can control this elbow... I'm going to flex your elbow down, and I'm going to jack you up with my underhook, and I'm putting your back on the cage, and I'm disconnecting if I'm Son Strickland here. Because I don't want to wrestle with Jack Hermanson. Neither does Strickland. Let's see how he does this. He has the underhook. Bad overhook. Stabs his knee there, knee there. Little tiny strikes within the pocket just to give him something to think about. Has control of the elbow here. Is he going to utilize that? See how he's taking this elbow down to jack this up. 
Problem is, doesn't have a good bite on this elbow, so it slips off. Now he starts going for double unders. A double unders is pretty good. You're going to want to get both down, elbows in, jack him up, just so you can disconnect. Problem is, is now we're in a battle of digging for over underhooks, and I wouldn't play that battle with somebody like Jacker Manson, who is a better wrestler than me. But Jacker Manson does something really smart here. He switches his head onto the inside. Now, there's only a few reasons why you would do this. One, Sean Strickland is pushing your head on the outside, or you're going to be going for something different. What he is going for now is just a normal single leg, basic single leg. Boom, grabs the leg. Now he's going to want to position his legs, capture this. I th it was the front leg, now it's the back leg. Look what Jacker Manson's doing. Exactly that. Controls it. Now, basic wrestling here. Run the pipe. If you don't know what run the pipe is, basically I have a gable grip, gable grip on the leg, have both my knees pincing your leg, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my head, it should be, on his torso, this is not good, have my head on your torso, and I'm just going to rotate you till your back hits the mat. There's no foot here, I have the foot, there's no keeping balance, especially when I'm rotating. And boom, I've completed a single leg. Strickland is wise to this, is already pushing the head down of Jacker Mansing off getting it off his torso onto the outside. It is very difficult to complete a single leg with your head on the outside. Yeah, I would actually just not advise it at all because you're just going to get guillotined. But Jacker Manson, great chain wrestling. I will tell you this right now to anybody that's like on Drickus's team. If you're going to wrestle Sean Strickland, you have to make this a chain wrestling match. You cannot just go at him with basic single legs. You can't go at him with basic double legs. Chain your takedowns together. This is what um, Jacker Manson does very well, and somebody like Hamza does very well. And why I would actually favor Hamza against Sean Strickland over Drickus against Sean Strickland, because I have the different takedowns that they go for, but we'll see you later on. Jacker Manson is going to get a body lock around because he can't, he can't take him down with this single leg. It's just not working. Pressure on the back of the head. He's almost out of here, but Jacker Manson's smart. You're going to see his grip that he has right behind the back. In that weird camera thing, he rotates Sean Strickland off the back, his back off the case. He has a grip. Although it's not behind his back, it is behind him. Not the best, because now we have to clear this leg to chase the back. But he does this. Boom, there we go. One, another weakness of Sean Strickland. He exposes his back. He does this in the Jacker Manson fight, and the next fight that we're going to be looking at is the Abbas Magomedo fight, and he does expose his back. And Drickus is fairly good at punishing people who expose their back, but there's some problems with that there when we look at the Darren Till fight. You see, th this is the problem with Jacker Manson. Jacker Manson should, from here, just re-attack the single leg. Get a, gr get a gable grip on the hip of Sean Strickland, block out this leg, and just... <sighs> There's so many things you can do from here. Not like I'm not even saying just suplex the guy. Don't do that, obviously. Look what we're at right now. But, dude, just transfer off of here back into a single leg, and then from there, double off into a double leg. Like, you can go for more off here than just fighting a losing battle here. This is not a good position. Because what Strickland is going to do, get his back to the caves, control the wrist, rotate back into you. Controls the wrist, and he's going to take this elbow over. And then now he's successfully rotated back into you. Now, what Jacker Manson should be doing, but I do believe Strickland is defending this pretty well. Jacker Manson needs to get a grip around the waist, elevate his head, Again, chasing the back of Son Strickland. But Strickland controls the wrist, breaks the grip, and then he's going to rotate back into Jacker Manson. And now, there's not much you can do here. Jacker Manson, disconnect. You're not getting a takedown anymore. And then just pushes him off. And then now we're at distance, where Son Strickland has a way bigger advantage over not just Jacker Manson, but also Drickus Duplessis. 
If Strickland can keep the distance the entirety of this fight, he is going to work Dracus Duplicy for the entirety of the fight. Next thing, 10 minutes, 36 seconds into the video is going to be our second, I would argue, takedown attempt. So 10, uh, right before. Okay. This one is just not a good takedown by Jacker Manson. However, it's a takedown. You got to defend it. Son Strickland forces Jacker Manson to take a takedown at distance. You don't want to go for a double leg at distance purely because it's harder to complete. Can you complete it? Yes. At this level, unless you're Bo Nickel, you're not going to do that. Strickland immediately puts his hand down, starts go digging for his unders, gets jacked. Jacker Manson up with almost not even really a headlock, underhooks up, and just super basic puss, get away from me. Like, it's not pretty takedown defense, but it's basic and it works. It's the tried and true methods. Get oh get double unders, get unders, puss, there we go. We've created distance. And if Son Strickland can keep distance, he's going to win this fight. Next one is 11 minutes. 57, right, yeah, right, a little bit before. You see, if you're Dracus Duplessis here, you mix up your takedowns and your striking. Now, where Son Strickland fucked up here is his legs are crossed. You never want to be standing... If you're standing up facing your opponent, you don't want your legs to be crossed like this. Although it's only for a tiny bit. If I'm looking at you straight on and your legs are crossed a little bit, I just barely have to control your back leg and I'm pressuring you and I'm getting an easy double. But because Strickland is so good at distance management, he forces Jacker Manson to take a takedown at distance. Boom. Underhook. Puss. There we go. That is the basic... Outlook of Strickland's takedown defense. And the problem is, is this is the takedowns that Drickus goes for. Drickus is very simply singles, doubles, a few throws. Where somebody that did have some success was Abbas Magomedov. First part that we're going to look at Abbas Magomedov is going to be 7 minutes, 17 seconds into the video... Yeah, right here. And Abbas Megamedov did really good. Now, this is what I think is going to happen. Drikus Duplessis is going to have a similar start to Abbas Megamedov. Um, Drikus is a very good fast starter. Strickland is a slow starter. I think Drikus is going to have a very good beginning. That's why I do believe people are picking him to win early. Because he's not winning in the distance. And if he doesn't get him in the first or second, Strickland is going to win this fight. And I think he's going to have a successful first and second round. But Strickland's going to take control very quickly. But back to this takedown. Similar to Jacker Manson. Abbas Megamedov goes for the double leg. Strickland immediately goes down to get over-unders. By the time they get to the caves, Strickland already has over-unders. Granted, this overhook isn't the best. However, again, jack him up, control this overhook, elevate, get his back to the mat. Well, back to the caves. Immediately starts doing that. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Abbas Magomedov and a lot of these guys that are from that Dagestani crew and why somebody like Hamzat will have more success against Strickland is they utilize trips better than a lot of guys that aren't fighting out of Dagestan. Goes for this trip easily. Takes down Son Strickland. Passes the guard. He's already passed the guard here. Chases the back. Strickland has a bet, does a really bad job of sewing off his back. And frankly, I think that could be a problem for him against somebody like Hamza, but I don't think against Drikus. We'll get to there in a minute. Then we have this fight out of the position. Abbas does a good job of controlling him, but Strickland stays calm. He has one minute left, controls the wrist, rotates back into him. Now, he's just going to control the wrist again and then just rotate back into Abbas Megamedov. It's a basic take you down defense, but it works. And I think that's going to happen against Drickus. But now, enough of Son Strickland. Let's look at some moments from Drickus Duplessis that I think are going to 
means something in this upcoming fight. Let's look at Drigus Duplessis versus Darren Till. The first notable moment, impressively, is 38 seconds into the fight. I'm not super Strickland biased. However, I got, I got to admit, Drigus did a good job here. Drigus is a good starter. However... I don't think he will outstrike Strickland purely because if Darren Till is able to get good octagon control and sting you with ones and twos, Strickland is going to do much worse to you. But let's get back to Drakus Duplessis highlights. Gets stung. Boom. Enters into the clinch. Does, puts pressure on the back of Darren Till's neck, breaking his posture. The moment he corrects his posture, Darren... Not Darren Till. Drickus Duplessis is going to go for this double leg. Presser, boom. Easy double leg. Now, back. I actually wrote in the notes, Darren Till sucks. Because this was not a good showcase for Darren Till. Butterfly hooks. Immediately elevate your belt, um, your butterfly hooks. And you're going to be able to get up easier than whatever the hell he's doing now. Because Drickus Duplessis... Sees Darren Till exposes back. This is something that Strickland might do. However, Strickland's not fucking up this bad. Because if we're to the caves, and we're right here. Now, this is a good position for Darren Till. However, I'll tell you, when he has his legs interlaced, when he has one leg in between both of his legs, this is good for Drigas. This is terrible for Till. It's going to be hard to get up out of here. But, it's almost like in the middle of throwing these strikes... Like, he, this right here, Strickland's getting up. Darren Till's just bad. I have no clue what that time training with Hamzat Shemaev was doing, because there's nothing really that is keeping him anchored to the mat at this point. If Drickus does not have control of this leg, then Darren Till is going to get up. And that is what Strickland does. Strickland is just going to sell up, get up, create distance, and then now De now Drakus Duplessis has to immediately go through that distance again, try not to get lit up, which he will get lit up because the ones and twos of Son Strickland is good. D D distance management is good from Son Strickland. And it's just going to be too taxing to somebody like Drakus Duplessis in this situation. But Darren Till sucked, so he's just going to get lit up for most of this round. Next part that's very interesting, 4 minutes and 48 seconds into this fight. I know he got his nose fixed. However, I am concerned because Drigus Duplessis is gassed at the end of the first round after this whole wrestling ordeal, similar to Jacker Manson. When people are bringing up like, well, oh, uh, Drigus Duplessis is going to have better cardio because his nose got fixed. Where have we seen this next level cardio? That's all I'm really asking here. Son Strickland has proven cardio over five rounds. The Jacker Manson fight, Imavov, Jared Kenanier, Israel Adesanya were all five-round fights. Drikus Duplessis hasn't had the fight five rounds since his amateur career, or early pro career. That's a fact. That is part of the reason that I am going with Strickland here, because if Drikus is not going to finish him in the first or second, we're already in a problem, because he's getting gassed at the end of the first. And we're going to talk about that in the Robert Whitaker fight. But see how he's already gassed by the end of this. And I'm not just saying, oh, well, he's breathing out of his mouth, so he's gassed. Look how labored his movements are. Like, this is an exhausted man. A weakness of Son Strickland that Drickus could take advantage of is Strickland is not good at checking leg kicks. He just, he really isn't. Abbas Megamedov was having a lot of success with those leg kicks, and that's how he was able to set up that double leg. However, Drickus, like this, I'm not going to say he's going to fall down every time he takes a leg kick, but in the Robert Whitaker fight, he keeps getting stung when he goes for these leg kicks. Now, next next moment, 8 minutes, 14 seconds in. Darren Till has octagon control over Drickus Duplessis after what Drickus was able to do. Even if you're a Drickus Duplessis fan, you have to understand that 
Darren Till is not better at controlling the octagon than Strickland is. Strickland is the best in that division. I don't think Drickus is going to be able to walk down Strickland outside of the first. I'm going to be frank with you. Maybe the second. One twos. Darren, Darren Till utilizes one twos not to the effect of a song Strickland, but Drickus Duplessis is getting clipped by these. I think if it's going to be a battle of distance mitigation, no, damage mitigation and distance management, you got to give it to Strickland here. The last part that I do want to see is 8 minutes and 26 seconds in. Drickus gets clipped. Goes for this lead leg kick. Actually, let me see if that was a lead or not a lead. Oh, no, it was a rear leg kick. Goes for this leg kick, telegraphs like a ma effer, and is about to get stung with this elbow. Boom. Okay. The thing is, is if we're talking about Strickland here, that's going to be a that's going to be a one two, one two straight down the pipe. I just don't think Drakus is going to be able to take that too many times. And one of the things that I will give to Drakus, as I said earlier in the video is these leg kicks. I think when he goes for these leg kicks, he might be able to get one, two, maybe even five off in the first round, but he's going to get, he's going to telegraph these and he's going to get stung with that one, two, and he's not going to want to go in to get these takedowns and he's going to start suiting for these sloppy double legs from distance. Next fight we're going to be looking at is the fight with Robert Whitaker. And then getting clipped from this leg kick Again, right here. He's going to go for this. Leg kick gets clipped. And this is similar to Hassan Strickland, but Strickland doesn't. Strickland has a bigger reach than Robert Whitaker. Stung with the jab. The only difference here is Strickland's going to hit you with a two right off of this. And see, that immediately makes Drickus respect that distance with somebody that has a similar reach to him. Imagine if we're talking about Strickland with a longer reach. Next moment I want to talk about, and this is where I give some praise to Drakus Duplessis here, is around 3 minutes and 15 seconds in. Drakus Duplessis is controlling the octagon against Robert Whitaker. This was the beginning of the end, but I got to give props to Drakus here. When Drickus is in his flow, and where I believe he's going to have sec um, success within the first round, is moments like this where he's able to walk down Robert Whitaker. And this is something that Guru said is Drickus could, he could presser Son Strickland and force him on the back foot, and where he would have some success here. He has good combinations, Drickus, um, Drickus Duplessis connecting on Robert Whitaker. I just don't think you're going to be able to do that with Strickland, frankly. This is a strength here because they are built similarly, and Drickus is a bigger dude than Rob, but he's not a bigger dude than Strickland. Next moment is going to be 4.05 into the video. He goes for the body kick and gets stung. This is what I'm talking about. Did this with the Darren Till fight, did this in the Robert Whitaker fight, and people that are picking Drickus are citing the Robert Whitaker fight. I just think Strickland's going to capitalize on this. Next notable moment is going to be 4 minutes and 22 seconds in. We're right there. Drickus gets a good throw on Robert Whitaker here. Steps, easy throw, good job to Drickus. Problem is, Strickland's not going to tie up with you. That's one thing, is Strickland understands where he has the advantage, and that's at distance. Robert Whitaker, more often than not, has the advantage here. But this is where Drickus was able to get the better of him. And gets an easy throw. I'm going to go over to the finishing sequence, because this is where Drickus Duplessis probably gave... his pro Probably his best moment of his career so far. Let's take a look at it. Number one difference between Robert Whitaker and Son Strickland. Robert Whitaker has his hands down. And this isn't like a Philly cell. This is just a low guard. You almost never want this in a setting like this. I just don't think, especially with straight punches, Drickus is going to be able to sting Strickland like he stings 
Robert Whitaker right here. And boom. Go back again. I have to give it to Drickus. But Drickus Duplessis, I keep saying it, is not going to be able to win a 1-2 battle with Son Strickland. I think if you look at his fight with Darren Till and his Robert Whitaker fight, the one that people are citing for why he's going to win, it is just frankly not enough to beat Son Strickland. Son Strickland is going to be able to keep this at distance, take this to a unanimous decision win, and... Frankly, I think it's going to be fairly down. I don't think he will finish Drickus Duplessis unless we're talking like a fourth, fifth round one. I think Drickus's cardio is going to save him. But I'm just going to say this. When people point out how good Drickus's cardio is or might be, they cite the Tavares fight. That was three rounds. Strickland has been doing five rounds and he's been doing it for a while. I think that's going to be the deciding factor. I don't even need to bring up the Israel Adesanya fight. Most people agree that Strickland's going to win a striking match. And that's what I think this fight is going to devolve into. I think Drickus Duplessis will get a takedown within the first round. And if he can't get the finish there, it's over. So my official prediction is Son Strickland wins by either unanimous decision or fourth round TKO. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this type of video, go in the comment section and tell me what you think about it. This is my first doing this like in-depth film um, analysis. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Adios, guys.